Hi. So just sitting here like dancing the song in my head and I look over and I'm like, oh, the curtain's dancing with me. I think it's the heat, <laughs> but still super fun. We're going live. Here we are. I'm really looking forward. I'm loving these lives here on YouTube where I just click live and I'm chatting with you right away. So last night we had an acquaintance with some practitioners I work with. That's what I mean by we. We channel. So channeling means like we're talking, but we don't know where these words are coming from, okay? As in these words are coming from spirit, guides we work with. They're just coming through us. So I was channeling for class. I was doing a meditation, 30-minute meditation, and what was coming through was we need to let go of our burdens. So a lot of the time, uh, I'm going to refer to the saying of like crucifying. We sometimes crucify ourselves or beliefs maybe you were growing up with, but that's something that I was getting a lot. Um, just growing up was this feeling that if you do something wrong, you will then be punished. Okay. And that's something that's a system we still live in is you act in this way and I don't agree with how you act. Therefore, I will take something away from you. Therefore, I will punish you. Therefore, I will hang you out to dry. I will shame you. I will make you feel less than really, really, really belittling and crucifying. Okay. That's the word that comes to mind. And what was coming through was if you have been diagnosed with a label that you have to carry with you that you now are, you are now almost crucifying yourself. You're now punishing yourself. You now are making yourself feel less than. And you now feel like you have this burden to bear, um, that image of like Jesus with the cross. As you know from my last video, I, I believe it's like pure, true love. I believe that when you feel like you have a burden to bear or something that you have to carry with you, you have the choice of how you're going to respond. So with the universe, you are loved unconditionally. It is magnificent, it is radiant. When you then get a label put onto yourself that you feel now you are, you're starting to take away from that which you actually are inside. Okay, this beautiful, magnificent being, like if you even understood the power, as soon as you start to forget that, because now you have this burden of shame, all these labels, all these categories you're being put in or that you put yourself in, you keep getting further and further away from who you are. And it's almost like you're going through life now to try and remember how to come back to that. And that's what was coming through yesterday's meditation was this heaviness we're now carrying, especially like going through a pandemic, especially with all this change we've been put through, especially where we're coming back to almost like labeling ourselves again. Well, how did you react to COVID? What do you believe in with COVID? What did you get done in this amount of time? What didn't you get done? What yesterday with a, uh, Bell's Let's Talk, Let's Talk Day for Mental Health, we've seen a lot of people sharing their stories. And last year, graphics from Google and sharing them to show like, I believe in this, I, I'm here for you, like I support this. Whereas this year, everyone's like, I am in this. I am in this, this is also me. I have mental health that I also need to heal. I have something that I have been labeled with. I have something that is also now a part of me, that which I also am. All these personal stories were coming out. And if anything, like if I had like a team, I'd be like, let's gather all these stories and make a book. Like that's just something that I would want to do and would do someday <laughs> when I have a team. Um, 
that's how personal some of these stories were. And some were people saying like for the past coming back to self because I was depressed for so long or because I was running away from that label because I don't want to be put into a category where I feel less than. So when this happens to you, and I have a firm belief that if you haven't been diagnosed with trauma, anxiety, or depression at some point in your life, I almost want to say I don't believe you um, because everyone goes through things that your brain then decides, is this traumatic? Am I fight or flight or do I react in the freeze mode? Like how do I act when I'm put into situations? And I did a video on this on my Facebook Live not too long ago about how Everyone has things to work through. Like if you're just alive on the planet, you've had shit happen to you, okay? Some way more major, some could feel extremely major, but the big scheme of things maybe aren't as major. But that doesn't matter. It's not up to you to decide whether your life has had this many events or not. It's your brain that decides how you're going to cope in these situations, your heart decides, do I need to close off? Was it too open? Do I need to be open a little bit more? What do I need to let go of? What am I carrying? What am I not even looking at? Because if I look at it, I may break and I'm scared of that I won't come back. It's not just up to you to decide whether, yeah, I'll let go of this or not. Your body keeps the score. If you haven't read that book, I just got it. I'm going to read it. It was from my uh, trauma sensitive yoga teacher training I'd taken. And it, I can't remember his name, Bobby, something with a B, uh, Bob, Bob something. Um, sorry if that wasn't it, but I think it starts with a B. I don't have the book right on me, but it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And it's true. Your body keeps the score of everything that has ever happened for you, okay? So you go into therapy, using canvas, going into nature, doing ceremonies, whether it's sacred or any kind that really resonates with you. Animal healing, that's my kitty. <laughs> I have another one too. Food healing, yoga, meditation, pharmaceuticals, you may need them for a period of time or maybe even part of your whole life. Like whatever it is that you need, don't carry the burden about it. It's more like I know that I need help. I know that I'm carrying way too much of a burden for me to bear. And I don't want to, nor do I have to. That's not my natural state of being. I want to be free. I want to feel good. I want to feel better than which I already am feeling, okay? It's wanting those shifts, asking for help, and really finding what resonates with you. So I'm on uh, my second therapist right now. And my first one, I loved her too. She just happened to retire. And so now she referred me to someone. Love her. I love her so much. Uh, she has her own practice. She works online all over Canada and in person and here in New Brunswick. And I can't say enough good things about her. She's taking new clients. If you want, I can refer you. <laughs> um, but just wanting someone that like really resonates with you. I've also gone to like, I'm a Reiki master. I also like teach Reiki as well. Um, I do the treatments, but I've gone to practitioners. Like when I just want to close my eyes and relax and get some healing without me doing the work on myself. And there's some Reiki teachers, I'm like, yep, I'll come back to you. And there's other times that I'm like, yeah, it wasn't really for me. And that's okay. Like, they may be booked up with other clients. That's great. Like, oh, I'm just going to go find a teacher that really resonates with me. And so once you start asking for help, really care about where you're getting the help from. If you don't resonate with the first therapist, that's okay. You can go find a different one. You have the choice, okay? You have your power of choice. Someone may recommend to you, uh, one of our friends right now just um, got coverage for a nutritionist and a dietitian because 
like he needs this for his gut, for his well being. Like for him, it's like turning into something that is like, it's going to give you life or not. So you need to start eating right. And I remember when I had to change my eating, I went to a nutritionist and I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm not going to eat like that. I don't agree with the things that you're saying. I found someone else 20 minutes away from that office and was perfect. I learned so much from, I would still contact them right now. And that was like eight years ago. So really care about where you're getting your help from and be open to possibilities. Okay. Uh, you may not even know that there's like this certain healing that you need, but because now you're open, you're asking for help, you're actually looking for it, and you're asking the universe to help you. All of a sudden you walk by this door and you're like, I've never seen this natural practitioner here before. I walk by here every day. That could be a sign. Maybe give them a call. So really take it seriously where you're getting your help from. And if something doesn't feel right to you, honor that. We're kind of in a society where it's almost like, well, too bad. Okay, this is the help you're getting. And you don't want to like question it and you don't want to look somewhere else. But you have the power of choice, okay? Half, I swear I have this belief that half the reasons we end up going through anything, whether it's mental health, like physical health, emotional well being, physical ailments is really to come back to the power of the self. So anytime you give up your power, because now you're not asking questions, you aren't finding the right help that you need for you, you're not listening to yourself, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Your body is saying like, I need you to listen to me. I need you to take me seriously. I need you to use your power. I need you to come back to your power choice and find what works for you. So really take that seriously and find what works for you. And do that and be open. It can keep evolving over each year too. Um, there was an image that was coming to me during the class of the burdens. So I was getting this image of a backpack. And you know, like the saying, like carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. It was like that. So you have this backpack and then you start and it's empty. It's super light. Maybe it's like this cool backpack that you've been looking for and you finally found the one you like. But then you start filling your backpack. So you start filling with fear because you're scared you're not going to have enough in your backpack. You then start to add uh, any labels you put on yourself that you feel you need to be ashamed about. So you put that in your backpack because you're like, I don't want to let it go. I don't want it out there in the world. I got to put it in here. You start feeling less than, a lack, uh, not feeling accepted because you want to fit in, you want to be seen. So all the things you don't feel you're getting seen, accepted for, you keep putting in the backpack and zippering the pockets and stuffing it and filling it until it is this gigantic backpack that you're like, I don't even, I didn't even know my backpack would hold this much stuff, but it is. And you're just like carrying it around with you everywhere. You have shoulder pain, you're closed off in the heart because you're so curved forward, you're exhausted because you're carrying this around all the time, all this extra weight that's not even like all your body weight, and you just feel awful. And you're like, I, I can't get past this. I gotta carry this around every day. How could I get past this if I have to keep doing this every day? Really think about what you put in your backpack, okay? <laughs> that's the metaphor we're using. What are you putting in that backpack? What are you zippering up? What are you hiding? What are you stuffing down and in there and really carrying around? 